when you really think about it, we're on borrowed time now. One real phase of content left, one real raid left, and then what? In the few Cataclysm related videos I've put out over the last few months, the comments are pretty much what you would expect. There's some of you really excited for what's to come next, and some of you claim you will be gone once the Lich King falls. I read exactly the same comments when TBC was coming out, and people were saying it's no longer classic because it's not vanilla, and exactly the same again when Wrath of the Lich King was coming. Probably even more so with Wrath on the basis that they split quite a bit of the audience by not adding random dungeon finder. On top of that, it could just be me, but personally in the guilds I've been part of during Wrath of the Lich King, I saw a massive drop off in the player base in Nax, unlike the first tier of content in Classic so far. But anyway, instead of worrying about what changes Kata would need to succeed or how far away it will be until we're playing BFA Classic, let's focus a bit closer to home and look at the good things still to come in Wrath Classic and also speculate a little bit on things like random dungeon finder being added, the future of Titan dungeons, what will happen to Ruby Sanctum, and probably more. Starting with a minor one, but something people seem quite excited about is this little fella, Frozo. He'll be flying on his magic carpet just outside the Dalaran auction house and trades you different goods for your frozen orbs. Now, I honestly don't know how useful this will be based on the fact a frozen orb gives you epic gems for the JC daily, which keeps them in demand, and looking at the prices at the time of researching this video, on the NA market they average just under 60 gold, and on EU just under 70 gold. So that would be some expensive Eternals if you were to start trading in your frozen orbs. Unless they had more lucrative trading opportunities to this vendor, I see it being pretty dead on arrival. You can get ruined orbs or crusader orbs through it, but again, I feel like the price of frozen orbs will just mean that using them for JC or selling them on the auction house will be more profitable than trading them in for anything at all. I've got to be honest, the new dungeons that get added are among my favourite in all of WoW's history. We all know Phase 3 is a great catch-up phase, but going into the ICC patch really builds on that with these three dungeons. And it's where I feel there could be some problems with the Titan Room dungeons. We'll get onto that in a minute. But before I do tell you my thoughts on that, let's talk about the dungeons first. You get three new dungeons, all with normal and heroic modes. They bring tons of loot, some reasonably challenging five-man content, and some pretty awesome RP, in one of them particular. We've got Forge of Souls, Pit of Sauron, and Halls of Reflection. The loot that you can expect to get from these dungeons will be 219 eye level gear for the normal version, and for the heroic version, they drop 232 item level. So this is the equivalent to TOC 10 normal or even Ulduar 25 normal. So yeah, it's pretty strong gear to say it only comes from a five man. First, we should talk about the attunement to the dungeon because yes, whilst attunements are almost a forgotten aspect of the game by now, if they introduce this dungeon how they were originally, you have to do the dungeons in an order to experience the story, which basically explains what the point of the dungeons are. So whilst it's not an attunement as such, you do need to get attuned to the following dungeons by doing the first dungeon first, basically. I'm not going to sit here and talk you through it all because quite honestly, it's as simple as just doing the dungeons in the right order, like I just said, which is kind of hard to get wrong on the basis you shouldn't be able to go in a dungeon you haven't yet completed the story for in the previous dungeons. So in order anyway, it goes Forge of Souls, then into Pit of Sauron, and then finally Halls of Reflection. I would imagine you can do these all on Heroic the first time round in Classic anyway, so you shouldn't need to worry about having to clear normal dungeons on your full TOGC geared main. I'll give you some highlights of all three starting with Forge of Souls. There's two bosses in here and you need to kill them both to get through the quest. The first boss is Bronze Arm, and quite honestly, the only guide you'll ever need to kill this boss is the one I read here from the Wowhead comments back in 2009. Follow this step by step and the boss will just fall over. He does have a chance at dropping a 20 and a 22 slot bag, so that's a bonus. And the second and final boss is Devourer of Souls, which could be compared to Reliquary of Souls in Black Temple if you did it. But both fights are fairly straightforward. There's nothing too hard, well, especially on normal, on heroic. Obviously, they're a step up, but ultimately, it is only a five man. So you're going in here just to try and get some catch up loot. So you don't want it too difficult anyway. Once you've done Forge of Souls, you'll be off into the second dungeon, which is the Pit of Saron or Pit of Saron, whatever you want to call it. This is the one you'll see pugs forming for constantly just to try and get your hands on a battered hill or even a never melting ice crystal if it becomes the meta snapshot, which is highly likely. The battered hill is a quest item that can be sold on the auction house and reward some pretty sick weapons to say the item only comes from a five man. It can drop in all three heroics, but the reason I say it will be farmed in Pit of Saron a lot is just because it's got quite a high density of trash and it can be farmed from any of them. So it's not just bosses, you can farm any piece of trash in here. And as I say, Pit of Saron is like one big trash dungeon, so 
sort of the perfect place to go. It's got quite a cool quest line, which I won't go into here, but honestly, it's worth getting hold of one of these just to complete the quest chain so you can say that you have. The final dungeon is Halls of Reflection, and honestly, this is my favourite. Being chased by the Lich King through a dungeon just feels pretty epic. There's nothing really notable in terms of loot outside the fact you have a chance, as with all of these heroics, to get a bad hill, but the thing that just makes this my favourite is the pursuit through the dungeon. This also has three bosses, and all of them have got pretty cool mechanics. I will break these all down in in a future video as in if you want to know the tactics for them uh, you, you won't need them you'll be able to go in and work it out but i will do a bit of a dive into these heroics a bit closer to the time but anyway that's the dungeons and a little bit of what to expect but my problem with them it sounds like i'm really looking forward to them well i mean i am really looking forward to them but i feel like the rewards in these need to be good these dungeons should be ran to death by everyone but with the likelihood of getting another tier of Titan Rune dungeons where we've just had Alpha, we've had Beta and now we'll probably have Charlie or whatever they call it. You're likely going to be able to get 232 gear from those Titan dungeons from any other heroic, like not just these. And the fact that these on heroic already dropped 232 gear, the only solution I can see which would actually work is if you do the Titan Rune version of these three dungeons, then you get TOC 10 heroic gear this would be 245. That way it'd keep these three dungeons extremely relevant in comparison to the rest. I'm not saying that doesn't come with its issues because now if there's a really good item from, let's say, the new Titan version of Nexus, but it's not the daily, hardly anyone will want to go. Understandably so. That rhymed. Most people would end up doing whatever the daily is and then doing all three new dungeons and calling it a day. The perfect solution to me is actually to get none of them. Yep, that's right no new titan rune dungeons in the last phase or in the second from last phase if ruby sanctum's got its own phase more on that later spoilers man and i do see it as the perfect solution and actually none of you will probably like what i'm saying but having titan rune dungeons in the next phase is just not going to feel great if they leave it all as it is you'll be able to get your toc gear in toc still you'll be able to get your order r10 gear from titan rune betas and then you'll be able to get really nice solid upgrades for your ults or as catch-up gear from these three new dungeons and heroics i feel like the addition of a new titan rune tier of dungeons I, I don't feel like it's needed in the next phase it would also make things a lot easier for blizzard as well because they have no extra work and they can focus on making icc as bug free and perfect as it can be which i suppose leads us on nicely to the big one that we're all excited for icc not only icc though the legendary weapon that has every dk warrior and paladin creaming themselves over shadow Morn. i don't really know why i put a little voice on when i said shadow Morn. notice it went deep i don't know First off, back in the day, how the raid worked, it was gated. So each wing opened every few weeks and then finally heroic and then you just progress through a steady pace. We know it won't be like that. Instead, what's going to happen is we'll talk about how much of a step up in difficulty it's going to be when we're playing on the PTR and then watch guilds clear it in 45 minutes. So yeah, I would imagine all content's going to be available at launch and you won't need to do normal before you do heroic. Blizzard could surprise us, but I really don't see the requirement of killing Lich King normal before we can yeah, actually start progressing in Heroic, but we'll see. Now, over the course of ICC originally, to make it as accessible as possible to every skill range of player, they added a buff. It would increase damage, healing, and absorb effects by 5% and would stack up to 30% over the course of many, many weeks. Originally, it was in March when the first 5% buff hit, and then it was around four months later when it reached the peak of 30%. I don't see it taking that long on live, and I wouldn't be surprised actually if they just added it in at launch with a toggle NPC where you can select what percentage you want to do the raid with. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. In my opinion, it should start with no buff for at least a few resets, and then they add it straight to 30%, but you can select whether you want to do it with 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, or 30. The only downside to the whole buff system is it doesn't affect loot. You can smash through it with 30% and get the same loot as someone doing it with 0%. So let me know in the comments how you think it should work, because I'm genuinely intrigued to see if anyone's got any really interesting ideas, like if you do it with no buff, one extra item from each boss or something like that, or maybe if you do it with 15% or less, it's one extra item. If you do it 0%, it's two extra items or extra Shadow Frost shards for the uh, for making Shadow Morn, you know, something along those lines. I don't know, but let me know what you think in the comments. Go on, stop, pause the video now and... Write a comment. I'll wait.
Oh, we'll just carry on. I genuinely am looking forward to the PTR for this phase more than any phase so far. And if you want to see me stream anything and everything pretty much every night, kick.com slash scottyj, come give me a follow. I don't want to get into the loot from ICC too much because there's so much of it and we'd be here all day. But it does hold some items that everyone will be excited for, such as Deathbringer's Will. This trinket does go down in history as one of the best and with good reason transforming the look of your character when it procs was just epic and obviously the stats on it was just bonkers as well the weapons from lich king 25 heroic are always going to be really exciting to get but on the basis every cataclysm hater out there has plans on quitting when they kill the lich king on heroic there shouldn't really be many people rolling on these so should be quite easy to get sure shadow Morn is not actually terribly hard to get you're going to want to do some rep runs to get friendly before clearing the raid and outside of the primordial saranite which is going to cost a few gold in the first week or two you're going to get a pretty sick weapon from the first quest which is shadow's edge and it's 264 eye level all your rets your dk's your warriors that can use this two-hander can get to this stage and get the weapon it's not until you kill a few more bosses for quests and need to start farming the shadow frost shards that it's time to start treating it like that Alanir, and then you're just going to take it in terms of getting this part of the quest done but i really think we're going to see a lot of shadow morns and we've seen a lot of valineers but i think we're going to see more shadow morns than valineers because i just think the player base of today are going to just be banging them out left right center mainly because it won't take several months to progress the bosses everything will be available at launch not bottlenecking parts of the quest chain and I mean, just look at Valinir. Go round and inspect any Holy Paladin. I mean, not having Valinir, what are you doing if you're a Holy Paladin without Valinir, Mickey? Sorry, Mickey. Private joke. He knows who he is. But yeah, they're just everywhere. And I would say they're arguably harder to obtain. Outside of all the loot, you're going to have access to some cool new titles like Kingslayer and the Light of Dawn. And you can get a mount that no one can see. But it's still cool to have. I mean, it's invincible. Sorry, old, old memes never die. Ruby Sanctum is a bit of a weird one. It's a bit like OS 10, OS 25. So it's real short and it's just a one boss raid that comes right at the end of time. So literally months after ICC and just while you're really either quit the game or waiting for the pre-patch for Kata. That was originally. But now I see it getting released shortly after ICC. If they were smart, they'd release them together, but just have a custom gate for it where you have to have killed the Lich King on normal to access normal Ruby Sanctum. And you have to kill the Lich King on heroic to access Ruby Sanctum Heroic. Ruby Sanctum does have some pretty bonkers gear that you're going to want to get, but you're not going to want to make the ICC progress easier by going and doing Ruby Sanctum before going into ICC. I haven't really got a lot to say about Ruby Sanctum outside of that, to be honest. It's a raid. It exists. Uh, it's memorably unmemorable. Finally, if I didn't talk about Random Dungeon Finder, then what sort of an ICC video would this be? It was with this patch we got Random Dungeon Finder back in 2009, I've been hopeful that it would actually be the time Blizzard just let go of whatever their issue is with Random Dungeon Finder and added it in. But if you saw my recent video about the new Cataclysm survey that went out, which you should go and watch if you haven't seen it, they said about making the looking for group tool better and building on it. So at this moment in time, it looks like they aren't even considering Random Dungeon Finder for Cataclysm. It really is such a missed opportunity and one I can never shut up about because... I want my Friday night smashing low-level characters in full looms and full enchants through dungeons that at the moment are just impossible to get groups for. But well, that's it. End of rant. End of video. All the good things to look forward to. Be sure to like and subscribe. Consider joining the channel as a member. Follow me on Kick. See you on the next one.